and it end just released data tables, which means you might be using Google Sheets a lot less moving forward. So what exactly are data tables? Well, it's just what it sounds like. It's NNN's internal table system. Think of the same Google Sheets spreadsheets you've been using before, but now you can host them internal to NNN, which means they are way faster. And by way faster, I mean literally 100 times faster. This becomes super important both at scale and while we're prototyping. We can move data way quicker from point A to point B and get our stuff up and running. So in this video, we're gonna see if that 100X speed boost is actually real. I'm gonna show you how to set it up on your NNN instance, whether you're on the cloud or self-hosted, we're then gonna go through how you can set it up in an agent format. And lastly, I'm gonna show you how to create a very simple workflow to take data that's currently sitting inside of Google Sheets and move it to the NNN data tables. So no more waiting around, let's just jump into it. So just like I promised, we're gonna start with the speed test. Up here, we got the reigning champ in the green Google Sheets versus our up and comer NNN data tables. Now these have the exact same data in their sheets. So you can look at it right here with the data tables. It's just a few columns, order ID, order date, price per item and comments. Nothing crazy, very simple. So we're just gonna hit execute workflow and we're gonna compare the times at the end. Okay, that was pretty quick. Let's see the actual times. And we're able to do this by pulling up the executions at the bottom and I'll expand this a bit. So we're looking at this right here, right? So when I click on the sheets, we'll see that it was successful in 779 milliseconds, all right? Now, if we look at the data tables, six milliseconds six milliseconds versus 779, right? Quicker, more than 100 times faster, right? This is huge. So before we go any further, let me just answer the question that you are already asking yourself. Is data tables really a replacement for Google Sheets? And the answer is, it depends, right? It depends on what sort of data you're using and in what manner. So if we're using data like this, where it's more simplistic, there's just a few types that we need, right? It's string, it's Boolean, it's date time, it's numbers. This can work awesome, right? You saw how fast it is and you can see how much value we could get, whether we're scaled up or we just need a prototype. Now, if you're doing things in sheets that are more like the Excel arena, like it's rather complicated, we have a lot of tables, like they're all talking to one another, sheets is still gonna be the winner there. But having this internal data tables as a tool in your back pocket is huge now. And so I think it's important to understand where that value lies. Now, with that being said, let me show you how to actually get it onto your NADN instance. So if you're in the cloud, it's pretty easy. You're gonna to come to the toolbar on the left. You're gonna hit admin panel. You're then gonna to go to manage, and then you need to get up to the latest beta. So 113.2 is what's working now. 113.1 works as well. And if you're watching this later down the road, chances are it's already you know, integrated in it. But for now, you need to at least be on the beta. Now, if you're self-hosted, it's gonna be a little more complicated because we need you to dive inside the terminal and we need to pull a specific NADN image from Docker. So once you're inside the terminal, the first thing we need to do is we need to edit our Docker Compose file. If you look at here at the bottom of your screen, you'll see nano docker-compose.yaml. So do that, open it up. You're then gonna scroll down and we need to add an environment variable. So you see this one here, nadn underscore enabled underscore modules equals data table. You need to put this inside your Docker Compose file, right? Just type it in, then do control X, hit Y, and then enter, and that will get you out of nano and save it. Next, we need to pull that specific beta image from Docker. So you're gonna do docker pull nadnio slash nadn colon 1.113.2. So again, right here at the bottom of the screen, you're just gonna put that in there, hit enter. It's going to essentially download all the data. We're then gonna do docker compose down, hit enter, and then you'll do docker compose up dash D. Once you do that, you should be able to go back onto your nadn instance. It will show you on the 113 version, and you should then see the option to look at the data tables. Now, if for whatever reason it still isn't working and you're still on your old version, what you may need to do is go back into your Docker Compose file and change your NADN image to the specific one that you just pulled, right? That beta image. So it says image NADN IO slash NADN 1113.2, right? This is us telling it, hey, don't use the latest version that you have downloaded, the latest. I want you to use a specific beta version. Understand that when a new version comes out, you'll need to change this. So once you do that, when you come back into NNN, you should see this up top, which says data tables. And it's as simple as creating a data table. So I just hit the little arrow over here, go to create data table, call it my, whatever I want. And here we are, right? So every table starts with ID created at and updated at, and it's as simple as just adding columns, right? So you see it over here on the top right, you just enter your column name, and then you have your different uh, types. So string, number, Boolean, and then date time. 
right? And I continue to add as many columns I want, just essentially like Google Sheets or Excel. Inside of executions, you also have the ability to look at what's going on inside of your data table runs. Now, coming back to the canvas, this is what the setup looks like if you were to give an AI agent access to every single tool available inside of data tables, right? So if I come over here and I go to data tables, you'll see that over here, and there's seven different actions we can run. And so we can insert rows, we can upsert rows, if row does not exist, update rows, get rows, blah, 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 blah. You see all of them here. And by setting it up like this, we have the ability to talk to an AI agent using natural language and have it change things within the data table. So now let's talk about what we need to do if we have data inside of Google Sheets and we want to now push that data to an NNN data table, right? Chances are you have some sort of table inside of Sheets that would be better served being hosted inside this internal data structure that we now have. How do we do that? Well, it's really simple. You're just going to create a basic workflow that looks like this, right? We're just going to get the rows in that particular sheet and then we're gonna insert those rows into that new data table we've created with a couple caveats. So let's say I wanted to take the data that was here in this sheet and push it to N8N. You'll see it as four headers, order ID, order date, price per item, and comments. What I need to do is I now need to create a table with these exact same headers. So I'm gonna go into N8N, we're gonna go into our new tests, and then I'm just gonna create those. But all I did is I went up here to add a column on the top right and then put an order ID, order date, price per item, and comments. Then I'm going to go back to that workflow. And if I click inside here, I'm just going to put it to test one. We'll refresh this and you can see the four columns I want to map data to. So what am I going to do? I'll take order ID, map it there, order date, price per item, and comments. And there, all I have to do is execute the step and it pushes all the items to that table. So if we refresh the table, we see it's all inside of here. It's that easy. Now let's imagine you were dealing though with some sort of data and you're getting errors when it came to the data structure. Understand that you could always do something like a set fields node and we could convert everything to a string if we needed to. So let's say for whatever reason, order ID, for example, we, it was set to some weird value inside of you know Google Sheets and the NNN data table was giving you an error because of the value. Well, we could just do something like this, right? Order ID becomes string. And so this would push it into a string or I could push it to a number or whatever, right? So if you ever run into that issue, just know you do have an ability to deal with it with the edit fields node, but chances are you won't have to. So that's gonna do it for this video. We really quickly ran through the NNN data tables and hopefully now you are starting to get an understanding of where this is a Google Sheets killer, right? It doesn't always replace Google Sheets, but there are a lot of instances where it does. And now we actually have a very easy to use, cheap alternative. So let me know in the comments what you think. And as always, I'll see you around.